Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. There have been some developments on the green hydrogen front over the past number of days. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss their significance. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. First there was an update regarding the green hydrogen commercialization strategy. Yes, you know, South Africa still doesn't have a commercialization strategy for green hydrogen, even though it's seen as one of the, the high potential countries uh, because of its resource endowment triumvirate of land, wind and sun and very good resources of those um, as well as the fact that water and we are a water scarce country is a, a major component of uh, green hydrogen because you, the way you produce is that you split it using an electrolyzer, using a, a renewable electricity they split water into hydrogen and oxygen and the feeling is that overall uh, that while our best resources are in the driest parts of the country. Uh, we can make this sustainable, both by looking at desalina desalination and integrating that into, into green hydrogen, as well as uh, converting grey water. And it will be overall uh, less than 1% of our water demand. And you know that uh, our coal-fired power stations, as they retire, they are also very thirsty. Uh, that there will be resources that will be released, but obviously possibly in different parts of the country. So it is a water remains an issue, and obviously the downsides to desalination, but it doesn't isn't seen as a as a showstopper. But other countries have already got their commercialisation strategies in place, are already moving ahead. Uh, those strategies are either on the demand side, which is really mu very much sort of Europe, uh, Japan. And then there's on the supply side, which we all compete with, are around Australia, Chile, uh, Saudi Arabia, countries like that with similar types of resources. So we're steadily getting to that point. We were ahead of the game on the research side for many years and had sort of uh, also developed a sort of roadmap, but it's very much on the innovation research side and we haven't really developed the commercialization strategy. And now slowly through the Presidential Climate Commission, we're starting to get insight into the work that's been done around the commercialization strategy. Uh, Joanne Bates of the IDC, who's also a commissioner, provided an update on that. And it seems to be built on two legs. The one leg would be an export leg, which in the context of our shortages of electricity, especially clean electricity, uh, uh, is controversial. But uh, she explained that quite clearly as to why that strategy is important in scaling up the industry. Many other countries, such as the US, uh, um, uh, have very well developed incentives in place um, to develop their production side of green hydrogen, will, which will bring the electrolyzer costs right down. Where South Africa, we know our fiscal constraints, so there's going to be limited incentives, I think, on that side. We will need some incentives to get the industry going. So we need to tap into the incentives that are available uh, from the demand side, from the Europeans, the Japanese. I mean, other Europeans have a fairly sophisticated price subsidy scheme coming in and South Africa is already bidding uh, uh, for one of those projects uh, to be able to supply sustainable aviation fuel from Sassel. But, uh, so that's an important subsidy that, that will be a catalyst for our, our green hydrogen industry. Um, and then there's also other subsidies and concessional finance that we're going to need to tap into from the demand side economies. So. Without that export component, it's going to be difficult to scale up and compete with those countries that have uh, direct incentives in place. So it's going to be an important catalyst um, to get things going. But obviously, in a scarce electrons environment, especially scarce green electron environment, it is sensitive and it will have to be well communicated. But I think the other components are quite clear. You know, this is green hydrogen uh, is really about the hard to obey sectors and we've got an opportunity uh, particularly in a green steel so there's a corridor or the, there's a hub developing around the Vault Triangle and Saldana Bay where we know we have potential to produce maybe uh, a green hot briquetted iron at the, the currently mothballed Saldana works there's a petrochemical agricultural and a, 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 a element to the uh, greening that, the decarbonisation, green ammonia, and then a big opportunity is around uh, heavy duty transport mobility. So around shipping, so bunker fuels as ships change their technologies, and then around long distance transport, uh, heavy haul trucking, mining trucking, 
um, uh, as well as potentially eventually also rail railways. Then a green hydrogen proof of concept initiative has been launched in the transport sector. Yes, uh, Sassel Air Products and Toyota uh, used the Mobility Summit in Gauteng this week to sort of showcase this Toyota Mirai. It's a, a, a fuel cell electric vehicle powered by hydrogen. And uh, what they showcased was this ability to fuel using South African hydrogen, South African produced green hydrogen. Sassel since June has started producing green hydrogen in Sasselberg. So they've repurposed electrolyzers there uh, that used to run on coal and uh, are now using a, a solar farm to produce the green hydrogen and split the water. Um, and that's going to scale up as they get the wind uh, project in the Eastern Cape wheeled through uh, those green electrons. So they're able to scale up in the next few months. So we are producing green hydrogen already at, at a small scale. At the moment, almost, almost a pilot scale, but it's going to go to a sort of more commercial, but small level at this stage uh, as, as that wind energy comes through. And then to be a transporter to site on a, a, con uh, a mobile container, tube container that Air Products has been managing. Air Products is, a, is a, uh, an expert in hydrogen, handling uh, hydrogen, going back to the NASA Apollo program where they were um, uh, the, a partner with that and managed the hydrogen for, for, the, for the rockets. And in South Africa, they've been managing South Af uh, Sassel's hydrogen, which is grey hydrogen made from coal for many, many years. So they know how to handle it. So they brought that, trucked that on site, and then they had a dispenser, so like a fuel nozzle, <laughs> that they were able to dispense the hydrogen. And then they showcased that by taking uh, a lap around the conference centre and uh, a test track there that had been set up with uh, the Premier of the Gauteng, Panyaza of Sufi, in the, the, uh, the passenger seat. The CEO of uh, Toyota did that. So it's really to showcase that this is not a future technology, it's already here, and that you can do it. Obviously, passenger mobility and sedans is not really, as I was saying earlier, it's not really the hard to abate sector. It's not the primary target. Uh, that's going to come up against uh, battery electric vehicles very, very firmly. Uh, but it's an important showcase that we are really producing green hydrogen in South Africa. We are able to transport, uh, sa transport it safely and dispense it safely and drive a car. I mean, it's, uh, the, the energy density of this uh, uh, hydrogen is, is showed off here because it goes about 600 kilometers range, this Toyota Mirai, and it's only about six kilograms of hydrogen in the fuel tank for that. So it, it shows the <laughs> the potential of green hydrogen. So you can see how, if you put that in larger vehicles, trucks and um, uh, mining, off-road mining vehicles, trucks that need to m not have their payloads dislodged by heavy va batteries, for instance, you can see the sort of potential application. So it was really a showcase to catalyze this nascent industry. It's not really going to be, in my view, uh, the, ba the, t the base case for the way we're going to be using green hydrogen. We're going to be using it more in the industrial sector, making sustainable aviation fuels, making green fertilizers, making bunker fuels, um, and also fueling off-road mining vehicles and trucks, uh, long distance trucks, and then obviously the ships. But it's, it just shows that this technology is here, it uh, can be done, and there's South African expertise that, are, uh, that, are, that know hydrogen very well. What are the next things to look out for on the green hydrogen front? Well, I think the publication of the commercialization strategy is the next big highlight and we need to look out for. It's been a long time in the making. We know South Africa's processes take long around these, that, but it seems to have been fairly well consulted. There's going to be a, a presidential climate commission, I think, a more intensive look at this uh, later in October. I think there's a big green hydrogen coming out, conference coming up in Cape Town as well later in the month. So it's, this is going to be a green hydrogen month uh, in some ways for South Africa. So those are the next few milestones, but we really need to get going now. I know that we are short of this uh, clean electricity. There's concerns about water, but we can see even our neighbor Namibia is moving a lot quicker than we are terms of getting projects on the ground. We are at a much smaller scale 
you know, testing the waters, but they've got a large project moving ahead. Australia's got projects moving ahead. And many other countries are actually starting to really uh, to move on the production side. On the demand side, there's definitely growing demand for it. So we need to get the, the policy, the regulatory frameworks, first the strategy, but then follow it quickly by the policy and regulatory frameworks that we can start moving ahead with this double-legged strategy, which involves both exports and then trying to showcase and then transition, decarbonize these domestic hard to bait sectors. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.